Hello everybody, my name is Aaron and we are going to flash new hacked firmware onto this XYZ DaVinci 1.0 3D printer. So let's go through what you're going to need to do. This is going to be a full complete tutorial down to URLs and yada yada. So let's get started. Disclaimer, um, do this all at your own risk. This could brick stuff if you do it wrong. So that's a pretty big deal. Okay, most of my information is coming from this website right here, Voltivo, I believe, pronunciation. Um, I'm kind of just compiling a bunch of crap from this website and a few others to uh, get this all um, set down in a nice, easy pattern to follow. Okay, so a lot of information we actually have to get through. So we have to figure out if your printer is new or old. Okay, so it looks kind of backwards, but 1.0 is new, 1.1 is old. 1.2 is old. Now, these are the firmwares that you will find on your display of your printer. If you do go to uh, info system version, see mine's 1.1 and then they say X for that because it could be anything. So if yours says 1.0, you're probably not going to be able to use this tutorial because you're too new and this is kind of the old way of flashing that I'm doing it. And uh, as of this video, there is no way to hack a 1.0. I'll direct you to a URL that um, shows the breakthroughs they've had been having with a 1.0. So a telltale sign that you should not be doing this is if your sticker starts with 3F10A. That's uh, the serial numbers of the newer ones and the older ones are what we're dealing with here today. So 3F10A. 10A. These serial numbers are not for sure. This guy is just kind of guessing. Um, I did try and do, pulled off the back here, and I did try to do the SD card hack um, right up in there where you put the sample, um, replace a sample print with one of yours using a G code encoder and then hit print, assuming that the print model doesn't use. Um, the filament counter, however the print uh, models do. They do use filament counters, so that didn't help at all. However, I did get a couple prints out, and they are on my drone back here. I did print uh, these clips, and on these clips attach uh, prop guards. So, i still got to print the prop guards, but I know the prop guards are going to suck through a ton, a ton, a ton of filament, so I don't want to be paying for all that. I ordered some um, aftermarket filament, so we're just gonna have to do this. So, your version. Once again, if your version of firmware looks like that, and you have a sticker resembling that, stop. Go to, I'll give you a link, go to that, read up about it. Uh, if yours look like this or this, you're probably pretty safe. So what's happening here is we're trying to mod this printer so you can use aftermarket filament. These chips are basically the same thing as an Arduino. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to download Arduino software. So when we flash this thing, it can be read as an Arduino using Arduino drivers. So I'll give you the link to that. Um, after you download that, you'll want to download and install uh, the Repetier software, okay? And that is for after uh, we're done flashing. That's going to give you ability to interact with your printer now. Okay, it's better software than the XYZ software. You'll want to um, download the firmware, the hacked firmware, at this location. Okay, I'll give a link to that as well. Um, now you'll want to retrieve an old version of XYZware. So you don't want the new stuff, uh, go to the website, I'll provide a link to that. Uh, download the oldest one you can get. And then uh, that's what I'm doing and then install that so that um, all of the flaws in the program let you flash to a hacked firmware. So after that step, make sure you have all of your uh, wireless settings, all of your network settings, everything unplugged and off. Okay, here's mine. Everything is off and off because the XYZ software will try to um, update itself and will try to update the firmware on your printer and if it succeeds then it'll lock you out and it's a giant pain. I believe it's impossible right now. Nobody's figured it out. 
other than um, shorting out the motherboard and reflashing using the Arduino software. So it's a big pain, just make sure you're offline. Okay, make sure your printer is on and it is plugged into USB, which I will be doing momentarily. If you do end up having to fix your printer, the, um, the jumper to flash the chip is right there and on the older versions there actually is a jumper there and there is buttons here on the older versions not just placeholders so you short those two out using a paper clip repair tweezers to clear off the firmware and then while well, the printer's on then you turn it off turn it back on and then you can use a the arduino software to flash it so i plugged the printer into my computer the printer is sitting on the main menu. So I'm plugging in the printer into my computer and I'm watching it find itself, COM port four. Okay, so what I've gathered here says, um, open the XYZ software. And it's probably gonna yell at me that there's no internet, which is fine by me. And under about firmware, it is spitting out that I have a 1.1.i, which is brilliant. So I'm going to upgrade the firmware. Oops, online is not available. Treat, please try again later. And then it asks you to find it manually. Okay, so we're gonna to navigate to our bin file here. And that is the one that I downloaded from the link. Open, transmission complete. Please wait for a device to reboot. So that took seconds and that's that. This is cool. So that worked. That was friggin' fast. Uh, please wait for the device to reboot, which it already has done. What I'm gonna do is just out of precaution here and to make sure that it actually worked, I'm gonna kill it with the kill switch. And there it is. Fantastic, so it did work. Oh, did it? Because that's some weird symbols now. Okay, so now that that's on there, we're gonna scoot back over to our PC here. I'm gonna exit this software and probably uninstall it. Bed height. The very first thing before attempting to print is to manually lower the bed height on your printer. Push the OK button, select quick settings, and select all home. Okay, so we want to do this. Oops. So, over button, quick settings, all home. Okay. So, all home. All right, so when you're uh, leveling this out, yeah, it's all a big mess on there. I gotta clean it up. Um, so you wanna put the bay or the tray at home. And you wanna scoot this thing around via the do not touch. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna make it, bring it to the edge here. There we go. So you wanna make it touch. All right, so right now I'm not touching. So if I push up, I'll be touching. Is that doing worse? There you go. So you want to be touching, just barely touching. Now the reason why you want it to touch, it's not going to spit out um, filament at this level. Actually, what it's going to do is it's going to spit out filament 0 0.3 millimeters below this level. So I just printed out a uh, piece of a drone that was set with a gap at um, home when everything's homed. Like, there is a bit of a gap right here. And so what happened was the filament, here's what I printed off. Okay, a prop guard for the drone. So the filament got cold before it hit the bottom because it was too high up. 
you get stuff like that. See that? From the extrude, extruder, there you go. Um, I used a glue that wasn't a glue stick, so I gave that a try and it worked. Except for if you look, look at the corners. See how they bend up? Well, that was bending up during printing. So as the printer went around, to see the problem there. I already tried this once before, and what happened was the printer came and this was lifted up. Like, look at how screwed up that is. And it got stuck here and melted a bunch. So you have to have good glue, and you have to have your bed at the right temperature. Mine's at 90, and I was using some spray on glue. I won't be using that again, but um, if your filament's too high up, like, look. It'll start cooling before it actually sets in with the rest of it. So that's what we learned today. Okay, so here's the deal. This is the computer side of things. I have uninstalled the XYZ software because it's a POS. As you can see here, it is no longer with us. So this is the uh, Repetier host software. And uh, I do actually have a job printing. And that's it right there. I did a little tiny, tiny one because I didn't really feel like wasting much filament to figure out that something screwed up. I did a bunch of um, configuring to get this thing to connect and all that jazz. I did do a print from, is this it? This is one of them. I did do a print from the SD card uh, just to make sure the printer was actually working. I didn't bad flash it or whatever. And that does work. Um, I copied all of the contents from that zip drive from GitHub onto the um, SD card. I don't know if that's necessary. It's just what I did to connect to the printer. I went to and I connected it to the USB here. Just got a print job starting behind me. These are the settings that I use. Uh, I just used auto. I mean, you can figure it out in device manager um, which COM port it is, but yeah. The bit rate I changed. Um, auto detect I put to native USB. I couldn't get it to connect, couldn't get it to connect forever. Finally I did that and it worked here. If you hit connect and it shows that it's connected and you go here and you don't see this firmware, like this is grayed out, then you haven't connected. Okay, so I'm pulling my information from my um, printer right now. It's the middle of a print job, so I might not do it. But when you click on the firmware, it should populate all of this and then you can edit and make changes. I think I'm gonna have to change my uh, Z coordinates because I don't think I'm pretty sure that it's printing off to the right a bit so I've got to figure that out so I finally got this centered thing figured out as you can see it's printing dead smack in the middle but on the computer software it's actually printing off to the side so I put in a slicer the printer value extruder and I did an offset of negative 30 right here Okay, and that put it off to the side. That was a dry print, it didn't come out with anything. But that puts it off to the side 30, and I figured that out by using this controller, by using these controls, and then figuring out where center was and everything, because it's actually um, 30 millimeters too far that way, because you got a gap here for the dump tray. I'm gonna home it all, re-level my um, bottom tray here. You can. Uh, Re-level this using an offset in the code, but uh, I'm just gonna do it manually so it's safe So I don't have to remember to do it every time, but make sure you save your configs That's what I learned that took me like half an hour to figure out um, Yeah, I also learned in here if you don't want to do it in your um, In your G code you can move objects around in here and everything so the studio is good as far as actually making the models I don't know what to tell you. Um, a lot of people just download them um, But just a program that does dot STLs. I believe it's what's called so blender uh, Yada yada. I'm sure blender will do it blender does everything So thank you for watching if you want to see more about this printer Make sure you hit up the channel like favorite comment subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. If there's any, if I do anything else, I'll let you know. But my goodness, is this a crazy learning curve? But we're making it. We're making it. And I'm printing stuff, and it's happening. So see you next time. Ciao.